Crane would have the nerve to string up barbed wire. It's more than barbed wire. It's a thousand head of my steers dying for feed and water. Oh, you just have to drive your herds across his land once a year. You could still work out something reasonable. I'm through being reasonable. I told Crane what would happen if he strung that wire. Blaze, we've pulled over some hard hills together. Turn our road behind you all the way. A wire fence is a poor excuse to make a wit out of Crane's wife. What have you been thinking about all winter? Crane's barbed wire fence or Crane's pretty wife, Helen? I think you men would get out in this kind of weather. Eddie, put up some coffee. You boys must be eating pretty good at your place. Should have ran for that last batch of supplies awful fast. I didn't come to town for supplies. I came here to get a shave. Look, Blaze, these farmers got a right to live, too. We saw so much stock on your shelves. You're doing a pretty brisk trade with them, aren't you, Vic? They're decent, hard-working folks. All they ask out of life is a break from the weather and a chance to work their lands in peace. Ever know me to break the peace, Vic? No, but I've seen you put away some who tried to. I don't hold for killing. You don't have to. As long as you got somebody to do it for you. I'm beholden to you for what you've done in the past, but things is changing. We've got to change with them. I don't object to change. Just fences. Barbed wire fences. Well, I, I warned Hal Crane he was foolish for ordering that load of wire. Still ordered it for him, didn't you, though? A man has a right to spend his own money as he sees fit. You declared yourself, Vic. That's all I want to know. Crane's a proud man. He won't knuckle down. But he's a farmer. That gun he carries is mostly bluff. You call his hand, it'll be plain murder. Hello, Vic. Dan. Mr. Starrett. If you'll just give me a list, I'll get right to it so you can uh, leave town before dark. We're not leaving. Hal wants to stay overnight to settle some business. Coffee's on, boys. Oh, hello, Mrs. Crane. Won't you join us for some nice hot coffee? Why, thanks, Ernie. I don't know if I should. This is the first time we've been away from the farm in months. I promised Mrs. Preston that we'd come over. Come on, boys. I make much better coffee than that ranch mud you've been drinking. Go ahead. Have a nice, friendly cup of coffee the way neighbors do. Won't you sit down, Mr. Starr? 
something, Mrs. Crane. I'm glad your husband's stringing up those barbed wire fences. We want more farmers around here and less cattle. That's not a very friendly thing to say, Ernie. Oh, I'm friendly enough, all right. It's just that you and Blaze are keeping me from getting married. I want a husband and not some ranch hand who makes $30 a month with a bed in a bunkhouse. I want a young farmer homesteading a quarter section. Ernie, I'm afraid Mr. Starrett's more concerned with keeping the range open than in your getting a husband. You've got the best excuse I've heard yet. Ernie, where would you put the shortening? Oh, Father, just when we were getting sociable. Excuse me. How's the winter at your place? Oh, it's been colder and harder than most. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Crane. This coffee made me think how good whiskey would taste. Excuse me. See you at the Wyoming. Want to tell me something, Helen? I don't love you anymore, Blaze. I want you to understand that and believe it. I don't. Can't you see how wrong it was? I can see what's true. I don't care what's wrong or right. Loving you's made me a stranger in my own family. It's made me feel cheap every time Al looks at me. It's not a nice feeling. It's better not to love at all. You met him first, you married him. Right now, you can't even remember why. Spend the rest of your life with him, that would be the cheap thing to do. When Hal and I first came here, you could have had me for the asking. I'd come to a new country with a new husband. I would have given up anything if you'd only taken me then. I made a mistake. I'm not proud of what we did, Blaze. I'm not proud I let you stay with him. I could have been stronger and faithful with your help. I'm only concerned with what's going to be going to meet in town once or twice a year. I'm going to call you Mr. Starrett. And you're going to call me Mrs. Crane. That's what has to be. That's easy to say. Not so easy to do. I was more lonely this winter than I've ever been before. But I had time to think. I'm going to be Hal Crane's wife forever. I'm sorry you had to say that, to be on Blaze Starrett's terms. You don't want the farmers to fence their farms. You back your orders with guns. You want another man's wife, but the man has to be dead before you'll take her. You don't have much mercy, do you, Blaze? You won't find much mercy anywhere in Wyoming. Keep blowing, the road will be belly deep in mud. You might have to stay in town a few days. I wouldn't count on that. Hey, George. My horse seems to be favoring your left foreleg. Give it a good rub down before you turn in tonight, will you? You might not be needing a horse tomorrow. He's coming. See you bought the kerosene. Five gallons, like you ordered. We've been having a meeting. Doesn't look like a prayer meeting. It wasn't. I'm speaking for all present plays. We're not going to stand for any gunplay and bitters. I won't start it, Vic. I'd like that tin of kerosene back, please. Didn't you pay for it? It's paid for. Take good care of it. I'd like to have a word with you, Mr. Starrett. 
You must have passed my wagon on your way in. I did. As soon as the road's in shape, I'm moving that wire up to my place. And I'm stringing it up. That's what I thought it was for. What do you intend to do about it? Going to be cold riding home tomorrow. I thought it'd be nice to stop and make a fire. I hear kerosene is the fastest way to burn up a wagon. You burn my wagon Pal. and I'll... Pal! Please. What do you intend to do about it? I intend to go upstairs and get a good night's sleep. I asked you a question, Mr. Starrett. When I wake up in the morning, I'll know what to do. I usually do. I've got to know. You want to know the future, Mr. Crane. That's wanting too much for any man. I'm not afraid of you, Starrett. Mr. Starrett and I have some business to discuss. Would you excuse us, please? I'm sure Mr. Starrett doesn't object to my presence here. Mrs. Crane, being with you doesn't influence me. I'll fight for what I believe, Mr. Starrett. I'll die if I have to, but I'll fight. I want you to know that. You've got a big mouth, Farmer. You got big eyes, too. You came here a year ago in your broken down wagon looking for a choice spot to settle. And you think you found it. But you never stopped to think what made it such a good place. When Dan and I came here, Bitters was the nesting spot for every thief and killer in the territory. A man's life wasn't worth the price of a bullet. No woman was safe in the streets, let alone in a lonely farmhouse. It took more than a big mouth to get rid of the lice who infested every bend of the road you ride so safely on. I'm not saying Dan and I did it alone, but we did more than our share. We hunted them down in the freezing cold while you sat back in the east hugging your pot-bellied stoves. Nobody thanked us. Nobody paid us. We did it because we felt we belonged. We'd earned the right to belong. And all you've done is ride in here and put down your stinking roots. And now you tell us that you belong and we don't. Mr. Crane, you said you'd fight to keep what you want. Well, I've been doing that for 20 years, and I intend to keep on doing it. And no pig-bellied farmer is going to stop me. Give me a bottle, Tom. Don't kill my husband. He intends to kill me. Hal's never fired a pistol in his whole life. Then he shouldn't wear one. He's not a coward. He won't beg for his life. I'm not that courageous. I do beg you. You should be telling this to him. I have. He won't listen. What made you think I would? Do you want me, Blaze? Do you want me to ride out to your ranch with you? I'm offering myself to you on any terms you want, but leave Hal live. Your husband's a stubborn man. If he won't give up his fences, why should he give you up? I'll tell him I no longer love him. He'll only come after you. It'll still have to end the same way. You're not a cruel man. I've been close enough to you to know. Why must you act like one? Because I can't feel sorry for someone I hate. Do you hate me too, Blaze?
tell your husband to load up his wagons and take you out of Wyoming. Don't you think I've tried? I knew this was coming. I've waited all winter long for this day. You'll have to do it, Helen. Make him take you away. He's afraid of you. But he's not a weak man. He'll die before he'll run. And that's the way it'll have to be. I'm sorry to have troubled you, Mr. Stern. that kerosene. We want you to go home. There are three of us. Dan. Dan! Roll the bottle down the bar. When it hits the floor, that's it. Roll the bottle, Dan. Anything we can do for you, strangers? Yes, could be. I was looking for a quiet place. We were settling a little private quarrel. I apologize. I don't like to break in on a party. But we'll take your guns. You won't find anything to take in this town. You'd be surprised at what we can find to take. Trail ends in this town. No place to go but back. Trail back is closed. Who's following you? Cavalry. Two days hard riding behind us. Cavalry doesn't bother tracking seven men like you. Captain Jack Brunn, United States Army, formerly. Hey, you. I want food and service for my men. We'll pay. Yes, sir. That cavalry won't stop for food and rest. 
my men rest. Now listen. Do as you're told and you can go about your business just like we're not here. Almost. But we are here, so it's best you know with what you're dealing. Pace here. He derives pleasure out of hurting people. Tex, rile him, and you're going to hear some screaming in this town today. Denver, half Cheyenne. Him hate white men. But he doesn't feel half so badly about white women. Boss, bones covered with dirty skin, but even half drunk, he's the fastest draw in Wyoming territory. Shorty. We soldier together. The young fella, well, he's a fresh recruit, but he's learning fast. I believe you. You just killed a man for no reason. There will be no more killing. And to make sure, Denver, boss, take that drunk and round up every gun in town and destroy them. And don't waste time arguing with anybody. How many people live around here? About 20. Who's the law? We handle our own law. Not now. Let's get started, Broom. We can do whatever we want in this town. I'm edgy to get doing. <laughs> Where do you hide your women around here? <laughs> Leave our women out of this. Well, we only want to borrow them. We we'll give them back. <laughs> no women. No whiskey and no gunning. With 40,000 in gold in my saddlebags and a long ride ahead. We'll pleasure ourselves at the end of the trail. It's going to be a long day, Captain. Want to argue, Pace? No. Just reminding you. I gotta have a drink. One. I'd like one. But it's the order of the day. Is there a doctor in this town? Dr. Langner. Beth, back at the barber shop. Can this horse doctor take out a bullet slug? He has. <laughs> Freeze at pace. You seem to think a lot of your women in this town. Who does she belong to? She's my wife. Change your mind about no women, Captain? There are only four women in this town. Do you want your men killing each other over them? Tex, Pace, search upstairs. Bring anybody you find down here. Shorty, take these two to the store. Then round up all the women and put them in the store and tell them to get inside and stay inside. My wife is upstairs. My men won't molest your women unless I give them permission. <laughs> we found one more. Get down here. Lady. Go to the store with the rest of the women. Hey, you. I told you to prepare the rations. Now get going. We've been riding hard for over a month, Captain. Hey, 
Hide your liquor and hide it good. <coughs> well, let's go see that horse, Doctor. When the boys come back, keep them here. No man leaves this saloon till I return. No whiskey. That's an order. You handle your men well, Captain. They need me. Come along with me. That bullet's way in deep. He lost a lot of blood. I, I don't see how he's still walking around. Has he got a chance? Well, if he was a horse or a calf or a cow, I'd know. I just ain't had too much practice on humans. It says here that a person with a deep wound can die from the internal bleeding, even though nothing shows on the outside. Is he bleeding internally? Well, I couldn't tell. Do you want me to kill him? Kill him? Broom dies. This town gets torn apart. You'll be the one that'll go after first. You gotta keep him alive. How? Look, I don't know how. I can't operate. I, I haven't got the instruments. I wouldn't know how to use them even if I did. You're it. gonna operate. What? what are you two talking about? Captain's waiting for you to take the bullet out, Doc. He's waiting for the water to boil. If Brune dies, I'll kill you. For. Sit down. You'd better have some of this. Put it away. Hide the liquor. Mr. Starrett, talk to me. What about? Anything, Mr. Starrett. Anything. You serve in the cavalry, Captain. Why do you ask? I remember hearing about a Captain Broom. Some incident with the Mormons in Utah. I just wondered if you were the same. Would you help me, please? What did you hear? No. Couldn't be you. it was.
strange how one word could change a man's life. I could have ordered retreat. By command was fire. old soldier. It doesn't leave much room for being human. for people in check. I'll control my bed. Jean, stay with me. I'm sleepy. What are his chances, Doc? I don't know. We're in real deep. Say if he lasts through the night. I just don't know. There's no whiskey. You'll never know. He holds everything. They'd have hung you back in Casper if it hadn't been for Captain Brun. I'd have been an old bum in Abilene. I wish you hadn't busted the bottle, Shorty. We could have had just one drink. Did you ever see what the captain does to men that disobey? I've never seen anybody disobey him. I have. Be glad I busted that bottle. It's a relief to see you and Mr. Stoward friendly again. Mr. Preston and I were so worried. That's all over, isn't it, Mr. Stoward? Doesn't seem very important right now. Helen, you can be good friends. Yes, we might try it sometime. What plays me for the wife to steady him down? Clank has stole the horse from him. He's just saddling up. He's going to make a run for it. He's crazy. He'll never make it. He knows they're watching the road. Keep the women inside. Back it. Out it. My wife's alone at the farm. I gotta go to her. Can't get through. I got a man watching the road. I'll get through.
Brun is dying. I saw him a little while ago. He looks strong and healthy. He might not last the day. What'll happen if he does? They'll start drinking and fighting. I've got to get Tommy out of that place. No, you can't help him. You better stay. They'll be here, too, soon enough. They mustn't find you here. Where could we hide in town? Beats me. Even if we had horses, you couldn't get away through the snow. The ladies will have to walk. Back to town. Get out of here. Jean. That's your name, isn't it? Don't make me use this gun. I don't think you ever shot anybody. I could start with you. What do you want? Let those women go by. I can't do that. They're coming. You gonna shoot them? I can't cross Brune. I gotta warn him. No. I don't think you want those women to get hurt. I don't think Brune wants it either. Only Tex and Pace want it. You gonna do it for them? Why didn't you stop him? I was trying to. Back to town. I told you your women would be safe. All you had to do was wait. Why didn't you believe me? <coughs> You've got all the cards, Brun. Go ahead and play. Only don't take it out on them. It was my idea. Yeah, we're have some fun with them now, Jack. The name is Brun. Ain't no reason to give him a break now, Brun. I put my claim on that one first. I'm gonna make the little one happy. You won't turn your man loose, Brun? Why not? They want to get drunk. They want to have some fun. <laughs> they could swallow this town whole and nobody would be alive to tell the tale. You won't let that happen? Say the word, Captain. Uh, I'll toss you for the pleasure. Mr. Blaze, you broke your word. Only because I don't believe you can hold your men. Tex. Put down the gun. Back to your homes, everybody. Stay on the inside. You. Stay here. It's all yours, Texas. No gun.
Finish him. With your fists. Bring that boy. Come here, Sonny. What do you want, my boy? He comes with me. Your friends will sacrifice you, but they won't cause a young boy to be hurt by acting foolish. about the boy. I'll take care of him. I promise. Now go on back. Please. Daybreak. Sure. Brun seems to be getting better. They're staying close to the Wyoming. Good. Hal is grateful for what you did. Deeply grateful. Go back to him. I told him I was coming here. I asked him to come with me. But he told me to come. I believe he knows and understands. What's to understand? You're his wife, I'm a stranger. Go back to your husband, Mrs. Crane. Thank you, Blaze. Thanks for understanding. Come in here, Ernie. I've got to see Bobby. He's all right. This is no place for you to be. Please, go home. I want to see Bobby first. Please don't. Oh, no, no. Oh. See, so you'll do him. I'll break your little arm. No, no. Please don't. Oh. Let the kid go, Pace. Ron's got the whiskey head. I want the kid to find out where it is and get a bottle. You want to drink ass broom? You're giving orders now. In this case, I am. <laughs> Forget it, Jane. We're all getting jumpy from not having any liquor of fun. When he cools off, give him his gun back.
<laughs> Get out of here, Ernie. I'm taking him with me. Stop. I'm sorry, you can't do that. She hasn't done anything. Don't hurt her. I'm not gonna hurt anybody. He's all right. He's as rotten as the rest of them. You shouldn't have come here. I'm taking Bobby back with me. That'll just make things worse. The boy's got to stay. I saw what happened. I heard him screaming. Won't happen again. The boy has to stay. There's no other way, Ernie. How do you do, miss? She was worried about her brother. She's leaving. No need to be. What's your name, miss? Rune said to leave the women alone, Pace. I didn't bring her. She's here because she wanted to be. That gives me certain privileges. Freeze, Pace! Sure is a night for tangling. I got a better idea. Let's toss the corn for her. Leave. Bobby, tell your sister to leave. Go ahead. I'll be all right. You didn't have to pull that iron on me, Jean. I'm your friend. We ride together, don't we? Sure, Pace. We ride together. We're friends. You like a cup of coffee? Thanks. I'm worried about Brown, Doc. How is he? Coming along. He ain't hurt bad, is he, Doc? Not like dying. You don't want him to die, do you? Oh, of course not. He never answered you. I tell you, Tex. There's something really wrong with Brown. There is. What? You sure look fine, Broom. Where's that little boy? In the kitchen with Jane. I don't want that boy harmed or frightened. We all like the kid, Brown. I want the boy with Gene. Hey, Broom, how about breaking open a bottle? Just one drink. I'm getting a chill. Just one drink. I want every man cold sober. We pull out of here at dawn. We don't ride tomorrow or the day after. Did you see the weather coming in? Salt dry for whiskey. I'll take that army pay wagon. Fought hard. Shot our way out. For a while! City run our butts like this was Sunday school! <laughs> Captain, you ain't letting nature take its course. Men don't act like you make us act here. We've got this town under our thumb, but we ain't getting no pleasure out of it. Two more days like this is going to seem like two more years. Maybe not even you can keep us in line, Brown. I gave my word to the people of this town. Why did you? To make you look big and us little. 
Maybe a better answer, Bruin. You'll drink, fool around, and kill each other over these women. I'm a-riding out of here at daybreak with six men. Saturday night. Invite the ladies over for a little social. There's no harm in coffee and cookies and a little dancing. It'll take the edge off for a while. Yeah. And all I'd like is a chance to talk to that little girl. I won't even ask her to dance if she don't want to. With no liquor, it'll be a quiet Saturday night. We need it back, Captain. Very well. Touch it, but you don't have to dance with me. Don't leave me. with lonely men. Please let us go. Soon. Why do you have to come here? You should be grateful. Our coming saved the life of your husband. I don't believe Blaze would have gone through with it. Mrs. Crane, when my men and I leave here, there will be a showdown and you will be a widow. Shorty! Shorty! Having a good time, gentlemen? 
gentlemen. Yeah. How long can Brune live? Well, I give him a big shot of morphine. It deadens pain, makes the patient feel fine. Yeah. As soon as that dose wears off, he's going to start coughing. His cough's going to rip the lungs a little bit more. A few hours after he starts coughing, he's going to die. Tonight. They took the women to the saloon with them to dance. Dance? What are the men going to do about it? Nothing. Just talking. Crane is talking about going to see Brune. If he does, looks like you'll get what you wanted without doing a thing. about the weather up in these mountains. It's storming up here, but not down in the valley below. You came here to talk about the weather? The soldiers, you think your day's behind you, riding over the trail right now, and they're heading this way. Your concern for my men and me, Mr. Blaze, is very touching. Your position is hardly a tactical one. You can't fight it out with those soldiers here. Even a private would realize that, Captain. Can you suggest an alternative? Yeah, if you stop this party. There's another way through the mountains. No trail, no pass, but there's a way. I've been through it. He's lying. Why didn't you take your women that way this morning? It's too rough for the women. Might be too rough for some of your men. He's lying. I tell you, Bruin, he's lying. I'll find out. You ride with us. Lead the way. You couldn't find it without me. Shorty. Pack your gear and assemble the men. We're moving out at daybreak. Jean, get the ladies out of here.
Don't be frightened anymore. We'll be gone in a few minutes. Can I get you something? Some tobacco? No, thanks. I don't smoke. I'll always remember you. Goodbye, Jean. Goodbye, Ernie. You mustn't go with them. later, but I have to. If you go, you'll never come back. There's no way through that mountain. trail to Cheyenne. I never said there was a trail. I said there was a way through. Stop maneuvering. There's no way. Kill him. Wait. Jean. I'd like you to know why I lied to you. I'm not interested. You're a dying man, Broom. That interests you? How do you want to die? You're a man, not an animal. You can ride out of here with me and die clean. Or you can turn your men loose on this town and die like a pig in the mud. Do you want another Mormon massacre? <coughs> How do you want to go, Broom? Ernie told you there was no trail. I didn't say who told me. Ernie must like you. Have you any idea what pays will do to her when Brune dies? I can stop him. Are you sure? I won't be here to help you, son. <coughs> Just a minute. I know what I'm doing. And I know what Gene's doing. But you, what's your reason? Why do you want to die? I know what I'm doing too, Broom. Let's leave it at that. I guess every fool has his reason. There is no way across the mountain. Who knows? Maybe I'll find a trail. I'm not even sure they're going. But if they do go, you know you won't come back. Probably not. Why are you doing this? Not doing anything special. Just taking some bad men out of a good town. You're the same man who would have killed Hal. I don't know you at all. No reason to. Are you doing it because of me? I'd like to know, Blaze. Doing it because of myself. At night in my room in the Wyoming, when you asked me not to kill your husband, 
After you left, I took a good look at myself in the mirror. I didn't like what I saw. It doesn't make me any different from the men who rode in and took over this town. Only they don't pretend to be anything but what they are. And that's all there is to it, Mrs. Crane. feel better now. I'm beginning to hope we're going to make it. None of us are going to make it.
I'm gonna need me another horse. Ride one of the pack horses. Gene, get off your horse. Brune said, get down. And I'm saying leave your saddlebags where they are. There's 6,000 in gold in them. You can't carry it anyway. Get down. Just follow the tracks. Snow covers them, keep the wind at your back. You'll be all right. Down! Be needing that gun. We're both giving this party, Mr. Blaze. Move out, son. Say hello to the soldiers for us, kid. Let's ride. We have to stop here till the captain can ride again. We're not stopping. Get on your horse. Captain Broom. What are you thanking him for? Get on your horse. I don't think you want to kill me. We got to have Blaze, Tex. We're going to stop and bury these two men. No. 
know, it's kind of a lucky ride after all. Lucky? Yep. We started out with about 6,000 in gold apiece. Now we've got 18,000 more to split four ways. Cheyenne, here I come. <laughs> what are you looking for? See anything? Not much. There's nothing to see. You know where you're taking us? Yes. You lie, you know it. I know it. Turn around and go back to camp. I'll show you what a Cheyenne does with a liar. Texting me the ID himself. Let's ride. Shelter.
Stop him! Stop him, Frank! Now we have to go out and bring him back. We need him. He just shot his horse. He'll come crawling back to us. Now let's get this fire started. We got the horses, the grub, and the guns. He can't live out there. Damn wind. The horses can't stand it either. Now let's get this fire started.
welcome home, Mr. Stair. Wait a minute. I thought it best to stay here while the soldiers will be around. I'd like to work for you, Mr. Starrett, if you'll have me. All right, Gene. Then you won't need this. <laughs> 